Alrighty, Lumberjacks, welcome back to another Logging from Scratch episode. Uh, so we're back on Legion Hills here, just taking a look around. So I have to go pick up the 880 because that's actually at the shop and ready to be picked up. Had a little bit of work done with uh, tracks, changing out some of the uh, some of the little parts and pieces that are wearing out. So that's all fixed up now. Um, we also, well, I decided to finally bite the bullet and I bought... Um, well, I didn't buy it, but I had that skitter that we caught repaired there, the one that we went and recovered. Um, I wasn't I wasn't sure whether I was going to do it or not because it was quite a bit. I mean, it was fifty five thousand to get it replaced with the new engine, new transmission. I just wasn't really sure if that's entirely what I wanted to do or not. And I was kind of like, yeah. But you know what? I figured there's lots of contracts to do um, that the skitter would be useful for, including you know whether we're doing. Uh, whether we're doing our, uh, like, you know, skidding of actual logs or whether we're using the forestry grinder, all things that are uh, quite handy to have. I mean, we could even throw a blade on there if we wanted to. Uh, so let's go for a little whip down here. Let's go get the uh, 880 first. We're going to bring that back out to the uh, to the mill there. Oh, and here's that other low bed. I'm just going to go around that. I forgot that I left that there. All right, so here's our 880. So we're going to hook on to this guy here. Uh, I'm just going to park her right here. Bloop. Oh, God. You guys will think this is funny. Remember how we did that whole uh, episode I was talking about the Tiger or, uh, the Tiger King series with Joe Exotic? So we found this. <laughs> I found this deckle. <laughs> I saw this on the, uh, the internet, and I just I couldn't help myself. I'm like... So this now is nicknamed the Tiger King. That is the name of this tiger cat. I was going to cross it off and call it the Tiger King, but I thought that would be pretty funny. So just to give it a little bit of a customization there for us. And uh, this guy, I'm just going to, I'm going to nickname this the Viking. I don't know what it is about this, but this thing just reminds me of a Viking. Uh, whether it's the axes or the weird kind of archaic lines on the door. I don't know. It just reminds me of something a Viking would own. But anyway, so we're just gonna, I'm just gonna pack this guy back out and we'll park it uh, next to the shop there. We don't need this for today's contract because today we are going to be going over to Grizzly Mountain and we're going to uh, be doing some skidding. So we actually get to test our skidder out to see how it does. It's not a very big contract, um, but it's, you know, it's something. So let's, uh, we got this guy all loaded up. I'm just gonna whip it back over to the shop. Been playing with some of the uh, articulation of the trailers and stuff here too, so hopefully it stays on there. If it goes flying off into space, we'll know we did something, something incredibly wrong. So let's go drop this off first. Yeah, and then once we get that dropped off, we'll take a peek at our skitter, and then uh, we'll just pick it up and we'll head right over to Grizzly because I really want to put that thing to work. Since it costs me money, it better start making me money. That's the way I'm looking at it. It's gonna cost you 55 grand to get her all happy and well, then you better get your money back, I'll tell you. Because if not, not a good time. Yeah, and then uh, it's possible, I don't know when, but eventually we're gonna come back to Legion Hills. I think I've said this a few times, but we're definitely gonna come back to Legion Hills to do some more uh, logging here as well. I wanna open up some new areas. Maybe build some stuff. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Right now, I'm just kind of trying to keep everything in the bank account kind of under wraps. Keep everything kind of happy. Because if not, we're going to be broker than broke town. So let's just drop this guy off right here. Anywhere here is good. Doesn't really matter. Drop off the Tiger King right here. <laughs> I thought that was a really funny picture of Joe Exotic. And please, God, don't take this as me supporting uh, the Tiger King because, you know, capturing tigers in captivity is bad. But I, I just thought that was really funny. And because of such uh, such interesting stuff going on with that series right now on the Internet, I just thought it would be pretty funny. And like I said, it gives us some custom, uh, some custom class there, right? <laughs> anyway, moving on now. Um, so let's go grab our skitter. And then uh, we'll kind of take an eyeball at it, see if we like it. Make sure it's all where we want. And like I said, for 55000 that thing better be in good shape. 
Uh, like I said, I didn't get it repainted or anything like that. All they did was replace the uh, parts that make it go. Because remember when we went to do the recovery, we couldn't even get that bugger started. So uh, apparently it starts up all nice now and the grapple works and all that. So uh, today we will get to go out to Grizzly and give it a shot and find out exactly, exactly how much guts it has. See how much money it can make us. And like I said, you know, when we're doing projects where we're processing or you know doing anything like that or if we're just going to go clean up processing piles that's another thing we could we could contract it out as like a, a cleaner which would be kind of cool so we could just go hook on uh, like that forestry grinder that we got and just drive around to sites and just mow down tr you know bushes or trees or clean up the little bits from logging crews waste piles that kind of stuff oh and here she is all right so let's whip around this way here there we go. We'll just kind of park it right here. We slap the old uh, original cat logo on the front because it is definitely still a cat, but the rest of the body is in pretty rough shape. Yeah, we can put our little logo on there too. So we got our main logo. We wanted to make sure that it was still knowledgeable to be a cat. Uh, and then, yeah, the other logos were so worn off from it being old and rusty that we just left it alone. But it's got a it's got a certain uh, certain style to it. Old old and sketchy. Oops, uh, I should probably lower the ramp here. So like I said, we're going to load this bad boy up and uh, oops, we'll take it directly to Grizzly Mountain and put it to work here. So let's see. Fire it up. Oh yeah, just like a top. Right like a top, hey? Jeez, it's a heavy machine. Alright, so let's load this guy up and then we're going to bomb off to I can learn how to drive a skitter. It's been a while here, apparently. Man, it's been a while since we used a grapple skitter, too. This will be funky. We've been cheating using the winch skitter for so long. <laughs> All right. So let's load this guy up here. All right. Okay. So let's uh, let's head off to Grizzly Mountain. And uh, when we get over there, we're going to take a look at the, uh, the skitter contract. So, yeah, it should be fun. All righty, Lumberjacks. Here we are back at Grizzly Mountain. Last time we were here, we were cleaning up a bunch of uh, broken bits of a, or a tipped over truck, cleaning up all the parts and pieces. So we got our uh, big red nasty, the red devil skitter here on the back. And we're just taking it over to uh, an area where there's a bunch of, a bunch of downed trees that a buncher's working on. We just need to haul it back to uh, the little landing they got there. So that should be pretty fun. So we're going to go pop that over there and hopefully pick it up. And again, it's been a while since I've been since I've used a uh, grapple skitter, so it should be really interesting to see how it goes. Like I said, we've been uh, been cheating pretty hard using that winch skitter. It's made life pretty easy. Just run into the bush, hook it all on, and run away. Now we actually have to learn how to use a little bit of accuracy with our uh, with our grabs here. And I'm just looking on the map here. I can't exactly remember where. I hope I went the right way. It wasn't the other way, was it? I can't remember now. Uh oh. I'm pretty sure it was on this hill on the side after the bridge. Unless, oh no, here it is. Oh, thank God. Cause I was like, oh no, I think I might've made a wrong turn. <laughs> All right, so let's just park this bad boy right here. Lower our ramp. All right, so let's, uh, let's take a quick look at the site here and see what we're doing. Oh, there's the buncher still up on the hill. Oh yeah, they've knocked down quite a few. So I'm assuming they want it piled here. So maybe what we'll do is we'll actually end up, uh, gr we'll grab this pile, we'll bump it over there a little bit, and then we'll just bring in each skid. How many have we got? It's not a very high paying job. I don't think there's a lot to do here. Oh, I got a few. Oh yeah, this will keep us busy for a little bit here. Something to do anyway. Then you got the little, uh, the little 551 parked up on the hill here. Looks like he's about to ascend there, but hasn't quite made it that far yet. So this will be, uh, this will be our first test of the big red devil here. See how it is. Get our money's worth out of it. Like I said, for 55000 it's about time we bring it back to life. Because, my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it seems to be trekking pretty good. Okay, so first things first. Let's, uh, let's move this pile over. And then uh, we'll just kind of bring them over best we can, I guess, and see how she goes. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, it grapples all nice. Still working. We'll turn our... Oh, my God. Turn our lights on. Maybe we'll leave the lights... Oh, we'll leave the lights on. That's fine. Oh, let's... Uh, like I said, it's been a while since we've grapple skidded anything. So let's see if we can... 
Let's see if we can do this here. Let's just bundle these up a little more. There we go. Oh, not too bad. I'm going to lock that, though, because I have no faith in my abilities to skid. Okay. And what I want to do is I just want to turn it this way a little bit. Oh, it's starting to pop out the side there a little. We're going to bring it right onto the right onto the stuff for him here. There we go. Yeah, and then every other skid will just kind of we'll just kind of bring it in there. Like I said, that was a short distance. It's hard to get a lot of uh, a lot of angle when you're just moving in that short little bit of, bit of room. I'm gonna leave that light off. Actually, it's a little bright for what we're doing. So, uh, topic of the day. Uh, so I have, and actually I have uh, I have a section on my Discord. Or I actually have ideas for topic of the day. So if you guys have ideas, you can either leave them in the comments below or you can go over to Discord and leave it on there as well. Um, so I'm going to pull some random ones from there. And I had several people ask uh, and want a discussion on tree thinning. The purpose of tree thinning versus clear cutting. Now, I have a very basic understanding of the purpose for it. But from what I know up here where I live... Um, there's not a lot of tree tree thinning that they do here because they don't really have as much of a concern about species um, Most of the stuff we do up here is clear-cut blocks um, Just basically to pull the trees out and get it cleared up um, So as for the purpose of tree thinning uh, So tree thinning is when uh, here I'm gonna stop this for a second. So for instance if these tiny little trees were the target for the thinning and you wanted to just leave the tall ones that would be thinning so we'd go in we would remove all of these little trees but we wouldn't touch the big tall ones um and the purpose for that well there's many different reasons why you do tree thinning so in some areas the purpose of tree thinning would be um to help support another species of trees so, for instance, if you had a whole pile of white balsam trees and a whole, pile of, a whole pile of pine trees all growing together, but for some reason um, the pine trees were growing extremely more and spreading way, like way more than the balsam trees or the whatever, the white trees that you didn't want anymore um, or that you wanted to protect, then you could go in and you would trim out all of the spruce trees with a you know, processor or buncher or whatever, clean them out, and just leave the balsam standing. So then what will happen is the next time they pollinate or the trees start to uh, spread their seed, what will happen is that tree type uh, will grow more prominently than the spruce on the next go about. So then, you know, now you start to develop, uh, like, you know, a, a more more uh, variations of that same species instead of the spruce or the, the pine, sorry. So that's one way, that's one reason they do it is to just help knock down a certain species that they might consider a weed and help the other species grow. Uh, now up here, uh, sometimes when we do specialized thinning uh, where I live, uh, it's uh, more for a biological environmental reason. So what they'll do is uh, what's a good example? So up here we have, well, there's actually two examples that would be really good. So one would be up where I live, we have a lot of different species of uh, endangered owls and weird types of owls that require special trees to live in where they nest. So there's certain owls that will only nest in specific trees. So there's environments up here where we have an extreme amount of these types of owls, but the tree types are starting to be weeded out by other tree types, meaning that they're not growing as much. So what will happen is the, you know, the park or the government will ask a, a felling company to go in and knock down a certain type of tree where the species lives so that the other types of trees are the ones that grow more prominently so more of that species can thrive, right? So it's kind of like a biological balance. Uh, so. As far as thinning goes, that's that's one main reason that we do it is to help uh, environmental species or certain types of species grow more so than others uh, in those environments. So that's that's another one. Um, and another type of thinning they do up here is for the spruce beetle. So uh, in Canada, and I'm sure we're not the only place, but 
in Canada, we have a huge problem with uh, something called the spruce beetle or the pine beetle or whatever you want to call it. I've heard every variation now. Um, and it's a type of uh, beetle that burrows into the trees and it kills the trees. So if back in, you know, the 1960s, 1950s, all the trees across the land, you could look and it was all green and beautiful. Well, now, because this beetle has infested the trees so horribly in Canada, um, in down into the States and in Oregon, all over the place, um, you'll drive through up here in BC and you'll see the entire mountains where they're just bright red because the trees are all dead. They all died from that spruce beetle. The spruce beetle crawls inside the tree, it burrows, and it just basically eats away at the core and kills it. And a whole bunch of those beetles get together and they do that across thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of miles of trees. So then you get these these forests of just dead, dry, busted trees. And actually, you know what? Similarly, they look very much like these trees right here. This kind of like piney kind of looking, I don't know what, I think this is a pine based on what they were trying to go for in the game. Um, but the tops will be completely red and dead and all the needles fall off and they, they're basically just pretty useless. Um, I know they still log them, but they have a certain time frame on which they can actually log those trees because they're not, not really used. Um, and lots of times they'll just use them for things like pulp wood, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, just to kind of get it cleared up. So anyway, back to thinning, uh, a lot of places will go in and specifically target uh, certain types of spruce beetle affected trees or pine beetle affected trees, and they'll clean them out uh, just to kind of get that area cleared up to try to help the other trees grow in their place. Because there's a certain level of tree that I don't think it affects. Uh, it's like, uh, like the young ones don't seem to get as affected as the older trees or the medium uh, aged trees by the beetle. So they try to go in and clear those older trees out that are affected by the beetle to try to protect the younger trees. Um, when I worked at the mill, we also had uh, lots of loads coming in called trap trees. So what the government was trying to do is they were trying to uh, create a program where they could try to target and trap the beetles. Um, I'm not, I never heard the actual details on the purpose. I'm not sure if they were trying to figure out a way to try to eradicate them or whether it was a way to try to actually like study the beetles. Uh, I wasn't really clear on that one. So, um, but it was pretty neat. They called it the, they called them trap trees. So they would, uh, they would come in and they would have these weird kind of tie ups in the ends and they'd be probably full of beetles. And I imagine they drilled holes or drilled them out in a specific way so that the beetles could, uh, live in them. But I don't know. It was pretty trippy. So yeah, in the grand topic of clear cutting and harvest or and uh, thinning, thinning is very popular in certain places where they want to protect certain species or protect certain species of trees if they're getting too weeded out by overpopulation of uh, other species of trees. So that's that's the purpose I've always learned. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you could go find out more from some forestry websites, but based on my history living up here, that's always been the purpose of thinning. So, yeah, hopefully that filled you in. Now, as far as clear cutting, which is a lot more popular up here in Canada, um, I see lots of people, there's lots of people uh, on Discord and all over the place who comment about, you know, why do you waste the trees? Why do you waste the trees? You just clear cut. You don't actually do, like, nice thinning jobs. Well, up here, uh, a lot of the contracts that we get in BC are strictly for clear cutting. Like, they just, they find a block in the woods that, they, they figure is the bright, proper age for trimming. They figure it's the right age to clear it out. They go in, they just level the entire block so there's nothing standing. And then a whole tree planting crew comes in and replaces all those trees with other little baby trees. But they identify certain blocks that are maybe at higher risk for blowdown, at higher risk for potential beetle kill. Beetle kill is a huge potential risk factor for um, like standing timber. So a lot of times up here, um, we'll go clear cut a block because you know what, if you don't clear cut it now, by the time you hit it next year, that, uh, that block is probably going to be all dead and that wood's going to be useless. So it's better to take advantage of that wood now, get it while it's still useful and, you know, hard green proper wood, not all dead and dry. And then once it's actually, um, once it's actually processed and cleaned up, you can still use it. As opposed to leaving it, you let it sit there for another year, and uh, it's all dead, and you can't use it for anything anyway. So 
might as well use it while you can. And I know a lot of people don't agree with clear cutting based on uh, beetle kill, but uh, you know what? Use the wood. It's going to be dead anyway, so, you know, might as well use it. So anyway, um, end of the subject there. We have now cleared all these uh, skidding piles, which actually I lined them up here pretty nice. Yeah, no, the skidder is uh, a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And our claws working really good and all that fun stuff. Now, that being said, now that we do own a skidder and a truck because we went a little buying crazy, um, we are now going to have a higher upkeep every month. But um, you know what? I'm willing to accept it. It's worth it. As long as we can keep nailing down contracts to keep these machines working, it's not going to matter. We'll just keep coining her, so it should be fine. Anyway, I'm going to go load this guy back up, and I guess we'll go back to Legion, and uh, I guess we'll wait for our next contract. But yeah. Now, uh, I actually, it's funny we are talking about thinning because I have a thinning contract. I'm not sure if we're going to do that one next or not, but there's a thinning contract where all the, uh, there's these dark wood brown type trees on Port Murray I wanted to go wipe out, but um, I'm not sure if we're going to do that one next. We'll find out on the, uh, the next episode, wherever we're heading for, but yeah, it's all good in the hood. So we'll park that guy there. Yeah. You know what? I'm actually severely impressed with this. This worked out really, really good. I like that. So we'll uh, we'll keep this guy for sure, fifty five thousand. That was worth worth uh, worth the maintenance cost on it. I think. Let's see if I can turn this bad boy around without making my trailer freak out or do anything weird. It's actually really stable. I've been playing with these trailers and uh, I think I got them balanced out just about right now. They don't seem to shoot around or launch my machines off in any wild directions anymore. So that's good. <laughs> anyway, boys, uh, I'm gonna call it at that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to head back to Legion. We'll work on our next contract, and it should be good. So, yeah, if you guys uh, like the episode, leave a like, leave a comment. Do not forget to subscribe, and if you're in the bush, don't forget to hug a tree. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.